Leviathan is one of the more colorful characters in this whole book. And there have been many, many pages written on this figure of Leviathan. One thinks, for example, of the book Moby Dick by Herman Melville, where the great whale that is the enemy of Captain Ahab is called Leviathan. The figure of the Leviathan in the Bible, as well as other similar figures, often appears as a defeated enemy or a kind of a cosmic monster. Job himself mentions Leviathan. Let those who curse it curse the day who are skilled to rise up Leviathan. Leviathan being kind of a chaos figure here. In Psalm 74, thou didst crush the head of Leviathan. Thou didst give him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. Isaiah 27, in that day the Lord with his hard and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan the fleeing serpent, Leviathan the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. The Tanin, the sea monsters, are similar kinds of beasts. Again, in Isaiah 27, the Tanin, the sea monsters, refers to the dragon that is in the sea. And here, in this verse, Leviathan could represent not so much a cosmic monster, as the empire of Assyria, which is threatening the people. In Isaiah 51, in the context of the Babylonian captivity, it mentions the dragon, the Tanin. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not thou that didst cut Rahab in pieces, that didst pierce the dragon? And here, this probably represents Babylon, that will eventually be defeated. In Jeremiah, Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me like a monster. He has filled his belly with my delicacies. He has rinsed me out. In Ezekiel, Pharaoh is compared with this dragon or monster. Speak and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lies in the midst of his streams that says, My Nile is my own, I made it. of man raise a lamentation over Pharaoh king of Egypt and say to him you consider yourself a lion among the nations but you are like a dragon in the seas you burst forth in your rivers trouble the waters with your feet and foul their rivers again in Psalm 74 thou didst divide the sea by thy might thou didst break the heads of the dragons on the waters here it looks like the dragons, the tanin, are more like the kind of a cosmic monster. And in Job 7, he says, Am I the sea or a sea monster that thou settest a guard over me? The sea or a sea monster represent those forces that must be limited and contained as they might overwhelm. Another way of speaking of all of this is the figure of Rahab. Rahab also represents in the ancient Near East kind of a mythological figure which represents forces of darkness and chaos. God will not turn back his anger and beneath him bowed the helpers of Rahab. 
By his power he stilled the sea, by his understanding he smote Rahab. Thou didst crush Rahab like a carcass, thou didst scatter thy enemies with a mighty arm. So here they might be referring more to human enemies. For Egypt's help is worthless and empty, therefore I have called her Rahab who sits still. So here it is Egypt who is Rahab. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not thou that didst cut Rahab in pieces, that didst pierce the dragon? Sometimes, though, these figures can be seen simply as creatures of God. This seems to be what is going on in Job 41. Perhaps there's a lot of dispute here. Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook or press down his tongue with a cord? This might either be referring to some kind of ordinary creature. Some people have suggested a crocodile. Or it could be seen as a way of saying that you cannot treat Leviathan as an ordinary creature. But in Psalm 104, there is the verse, There go the ships and Leviathan, which thou didst form to sport in it, in other words, in the sea. And so here, Leviathan simply seems to be another creature. In the book of Second Esdras, which is a, a non-biblical Jewish writing, it talks about Leviathan and Behemoth, referring to the book of Job. Then thou didst keep in existence two living creatures, the name of one thou didst call Behemoth, and the other name of the other Leviathan, and thou didst separate one from the other, for the seventh part where the water had been gathered together could not hold them both. And thou didst give Behemoth one of the parts which had been dried up on the third day to live in it, where there are a thousand mountains. But to Leviathan thou didst give the seventh part, the watery part, and thou hast kept them, both Behemoth and Leviathan, to be eaten by whom thou wilt and when thou wilt. And in uh, apocalyptic literature, there is sort of a tradition that in the Messianic age, these beasts, the Leviathan and the Behemoth, will serve as food for the victorious people of God. The Tanin are also spoken of sometimes as ordinary creatures. So God created the great sea monsters and ever, every living creature that moves. And God saw that it was good. And in Psalm 148, it has the sea monsters and all deeps praising the Lord from the earth. <laughs> 